Hi, I'm David Cook from Robot Room, and today I'm going to be testing the new model rocket ignition system. This one is different than my previous rocket launch controllers in that the battery is contained within the box, and the box stays near the launch pad, and your controller is far away. That way the battery can deliver maximum current to the rocket and the rocket igniter. On the top panel, we have a power switch. When I turn it on, you'll see a green LED is lit to let you know you have power, and a yellow LED is blinking to let you know the microcontroller is alive. There's also a buzzer to let the operator know that they're ready to launch, but also to let the person who's nearby the rocket launch pad know that someone's trying to launch. Key switch, this is for safety purposes, and I'll show you that in a minute. This is a socket for a patch cable that connects to the controllers which are located farther away and you have these terminals for hooking up the igniter uh, on the rocket. Today instead of using a rocket we're going to simply use a light bulb. When I hook up the other wire of the light bulb we'll see a blue LED turns on and that tells you you have continuity. You have what looks like an igniter hooked up to the system. I'm going to now insert the key to the key switch, turn it on. So we now have a red light to let you know we're ready to launch and the yellow light now blinks a little more slowly to also let you know the microcontroller recognizes that it's ready to launch. I have this yellow patch cord, it's 25 feet long, and it's really, it's used for microphones or uh, I think more specifically, this is used for a pedal effect switch on a guitar. But it's nice in that it's really easy to connect up, it's bright so no one's gonna trip on it, and it's flexible and it's made to sort of take a beating. So put that in. So now the controllers are connected to the main box. And this goes 25 feet away. In this particular case, I'm using some slot car controllers and this is our armed switch and this is our launch switch. So let's try it out. And you'll notice I didn't let go of the, of the launch button and the igniter turned on and then turned off even though I hadn't let go yet. And that's a safety feature to prevent uh, someone from, say, for example, dropping the controller on the ground and having a short circuit still occurring with the igniter. Let me tell you about a couple of other safety features on this. Uh, I've just launched, and if I try to launch again, nothing happens. I have to walk back to the box where I'm going to hook it up to a new igniter. But even then, nothing, I can't hook up the igniter and have it suddenly start going again. Instead, you have to turn the key to the off position, and you have to have let, let go of both of the controllers. Otherwise, it won't launch again. So now let's say you've, you've replaced your fuse. Uh, well, let's say you, you uh, don't want to launch again at this system. If you pull the key out, well, nobody can turn it on. So that's great. But if you turn the key in, turn it to the on position, you can't pull the key out and walk away with the key thinking that your system is locked. As long as you've got it in the on or ready state, it won't let you remove the key. The only way to remove the key, again, put it in this position, and now you're safe. It won't launch. This position, it will launch, and let's launch again. Oop, I let go. I let go early. Well, in that case, the launch just starts again. In this example, I let go really quickly of the launch button. And therefore, it didn't power the igniter the whole time, which is fine. So if you as the operator know that the launch has occurred, you can just let go of this and the igniter will stop lighting.